In a previous slide, we saw that if we combine the rate constant for the forward reaction and the rate constant for the reverse reaction, we get a new constant that we call the equilibrium constant. For a general reaction where there's A moles of A reacting with B moles of B to produce D moles of D and E moles of E, we can write what we call an equilibrium constant expression. And we represent the equilibrium constant with a capital letter K and in this situation, we'll use a subscript C to indicate we're going to be working with the molar concentrations of reactants and products. The equilibrium constant expression indicates that the equilibrium constant is equal to the molar concentrations of the products raised to their coefficients divided by the molar concentrations of the reactants raised to their coefficients. The equilibrium constant expression depends only on the stoichiometry of the reaction and it is not based on the mechanism. Also, for a given reaction, the equilibrium constant will vary with temperature just as temperature changes, the rate constants will also change. Let's look at how to write the equilibrium constant expression for the reaction of hydrogen reacting with iodine to produce hydrogen iodide. In order to write the equilibrium constant expression, we would write Kc is equal to the concentration of the products raised to their coefficient. In this case, product is hydrogen iodide, and we would take that concentration squared since the coefficient of hydrogen iodide is 2. In the denominator, we'd have the concentration of hydrogen to the first power and the concentration of iodine to the first power because each of those two reactants has a coefficient of 1 in the balanced chemical equation. One final important note to make at this time is that equilibrium constants are typically written without units. In a previous equilibrium constant expression, we used a subscript C indicating that we would be using the molar concentrations of the products and the reactants. However, when we have a gas phase reaction, we could also use the partial pressures of the reactants and products in place of molar concentrations. In that case, instead of a C subscript for the equilibrium constant, we use a P subscript to indicate that we're obtaining the equilibrium constant from the partial pressures of the reactants and products. Because of this, we need to indicate what the relationship is between K sub C and K sub P. This relationship is given by the equation K sub P equals K sub C multiplied by the gas constant R times the temperature in Kelvin and R times T is raised to the power of delta N where delta N is the change in the number of moles of gas in the equation. The change in the moles of gas is taken by finding the moles of gas of the product and subtracting from that the moles of gas of the reactant. We've already seen how equilibrium constants are calculated if we have a homogeneous reaction. In other words, if all the reactants and products are in the same physical state, for example, all in the gas phase. However, what happens if we have an equilibrium system where it is heterogeneous, in other words, there are multiple physical states represented on the reactant and or product side. In those situations, we only include in the equilibrium constant expression those reactants and products that are in either the aqueous phase or in the gas phase. We do not include reactants or products that are either pure solids or liquids, as indicated by the physical state sign after the formulas. So for example, if we wanted to write the equilibrium constant expression for the e equilibrium that arises when solid lead chloride dissolves to form aqueous lead ions and aqueous chloride ions, we would neglect the lead chloride solid, which is on the reactant side, and in the equilibrium constant expression would typically be in the denominator. However, since we do not want to include the solids, the equilibrium constant expression 
for this equilibrium would be Kc equals the molar concentration of lead 2 plus ions multiplied by the square of the molar concentration of the chloride ions. In this problem, we're asked to determine the value of Kp at a given temperature if we already know the K sub C value for a specific reaction. The first thing we want to do is recall the mathematical relationship between Kp and Kc. And this is Kp equals Kc times RT raised to the delta N power. We already have the temperature in Kelvin. What we have to find out is the value of delta N. In this case, we recall that the value of delta N is the moles of gas in the balanced equation and subtracted from that the moles of gas on the reactant side. In this case, we have two moles of gas on the product side minus one mole of gas on the reactant side for a delta N of one. When we plug these values into the equation, Kp equals Kc times Rt to the first power, we find that the value of Kp for this reaction at 373 Kelvin is 6.52. As a side note, what would be the case if we had no change in the moles of gas between reactant and product? In that case, delta N would be zero because we have the same number of moles of gas on each side of the equation. If RT is raised to the zero power, you should recall that anything raised to the zero power is one. So in those situations where there are equal moles of gas on each side of the equation, Kp equals Kc times Rt raised to the zero power, or in other words, in those situations, Kp will equal Kc. By now, you should be able to write an equilibrium constant expression. You should also be able to write an equilibrium constant expression for a heterogeneous reaction. You should be able to write an equilibrium constant expression for K sub P using partial pressure values, and you should also be able to calculate Kp when you're given a K sub C value.